actually landed on April the 30th. But a full field of 14, James. We were on the hook for our selections on the Kentucky Derby morning work show over the course of the last couple of days. Uh, I landed on Ness, the 5-2 to two morning line favorite. I like her quite a bit, but Secret Oath, Echo Zulu, the undefeated champion. And then on the second page here, Kathleen O. Oh, she's also undefeated for Shug McGahee, Wild Card and Shahama. Uh, what an intriguing, fantastic edition of the Oaks. Great betting race. Yeah, I, I cannot remember a Kentucky Oaks that is this top heavy where we have four serious win contenders. Uh, you know, un, a couple unbeaten, uh, two unbeaten runners, a uh, juvenile champion. So just a dynamite field. You get past those four contenders and you got a lot of like solid promising types as well. So uh, it shapes up like, you know, one thing about both the Oaks and Derby this year, I just think, you know, for a handicapper like myself, just couldn't be more challenging. Yeah, Kentucky Derby as well. You know, you've got some horses that may be considered to be the cream of the crop uh, when it comes to uh Zandon, the morning line favorite, the epicenter, uh, who many thought had a chance to be uh, the morning line favorite and or the public choice. California Invaders, Messier, Taiba, uh, Mo Donegal, who was so impressive in the Wood Memorial. Uh, Top Pletcher again with three this year, including Charged, who's got a ton of upside. Tis the Bomb, who's been amazing on synthetics, but can he convert that over to the dirt as we turn over to the second page here? Uh, and then the horses coming from Florida. What's wrong with them? White of Barrio, Simplification, I already mentioned charge it zozos who you like i mean the list goes on and on absolutely yeah i mean and i'm looking for a horse that's going to have more to offer on the first saturday of may but you know it's a complete guessing game sometimes as well with that proposition real interesting to me though really five identifiable speed horses in the derby field and three of them are drawn in post six or inside take a look at the two also eligibles hoping for a scratch in order to get into the mile and a quarter Grade one Kentucky Derby presented by Woodford Reserve coming up, of course, on Saturday. And James, a couple of years ago, 20 horse starting gate. You know, we had the main gate and the auxiliary gate and it worked out fine. But the rail was not good uh, as far as a post position goes. And you had the auxiliary gate and there were some challenges. Let's take a look at the old starting gate and where the rail was positioned as far as in accordance to the one post position, you almost had to run right into the rail. A perfect example of it there, severely compromised. Now with the new 20 horse starting gate, changes a little bit. Look how many paths you have in between where the rail is situated and where the one post actually is. Yeah, it's hard to believe it's that many feet away from it originally bid. You know, you had two gates before they eliminated that gap, but uh, the stalls themselves are uh, pretty, you know, are, are a little bit narrower as well. So uh, it's a situation where everybody's excited to have that new starting gate because horses will break to open space. So the 14 and the 15 created potential right. for problems at the start when there was a gap and now there's no gap. So it's great. Uh, fantastic uh, menu of wagering opportunities. It's like when you go to your favorite restaurant and you don't know what to order. Well, you can order a lot of different uh, things both Friday and Saturday. Oaks Derby Double, my favorite wager the entire weekend. Oaks Old Forester Bourbon Turf Classic Derby Pick 3. We'll talk more about the Oaks Derby Pick 6 in just a bit. But James, some new wagers. An all three-year-old Pick 3 on Saturday. An all stakes, all dirt Pick 5. Pick five pools, 15%, plethora of those kinds of wagers as we turn the page uh, to Kentucky Derby Day. Derby City 6 continues on today with that $10,000 carryover. That's a mandatory payout. So many different wagers you can make. It's just a matter of knowing what horses you like, Kentucky Derby and all the other great races, and maximizing the budget that you Yeah, and have. I'm really excited to see the two new ones, the Dirt uh, Pick 3 and the 3-year-old Pick 3. We've talked about that in previous years. With They, they should like create new wagers every year because they have so many options over the two-day period. And great to see uh, Gary Palmazzato and others that have, have, have listened and added uh, two of those new wagers this year. And I'm sure they'll continue to experiment with different kinds of uh, wagering options going forward and that two-day pick six now the derby city six is a 20 cent jackpot wager with a mandatory payoff on derby day this is a two dollar pick six the la troyan and the kentucky oaks on friday and four races on the saturday card including the kentucky derby which is the last leg 15 percent low takeout two dollar minimum wager again if you're alive in the oaks derby double or this pick six yeah. or one of the two-day pick threes it's just great to be at the end of the day, hopefully counting your money and looking at what tickets are alive 
going into Derby Day. Yeah, no doubt. And I think before that had been three and three. I like the two and four format. I love that potential to be alive, essentially for a pick four, and the low takeout makes it even more appealing. Now, on opening night, we took a look at uh, a graphic that showed us how the trainers have done the first six days of the meet. That's opening night, James, and then all of Derby Week, the last five years. Here is the jockey version of that uh, statistic. Beyond the PPs with Brisnet. Now, the profitable jockeys have been Brian Hernandez Jr., Miguel Reyna, rest in peace. Uh, we miss you, Miggy. Uh, Jose Ortiz, also Johnny Velasquez, James Graham, and I read Ortiz, all plus in the ROI column. You'll see where Florent Giroux has won a lot of races, but he hasn't been profitable. But this is interesting because we have a great colony here at Churchill Downs, but we also have a lot of other riders coming over from Keeneland that stick around Derby Week. Shows us uh, who's done the best the last five years. Yeah, and that really catches me with both the Jose and Irad Ortiz uh, positive ROI. You know, they've ridden, they've ridden winners and they've ridden ri winners at a price. No surprise to see Lannery and Hernandez at the top. They're former, they've been leading riders at Churchill and our mainstay here and uh, yeah that's great information to me because you can just see Luis Saez he's won a lot of races but a lot of them have been short priced Luis Saez with four wins already this meet to Gerardo Morales with four wins as well uh, beyond the PPs with Bristnet. All right, let's take a look at the opening race on the 11 race program, James. $8,000 claimers, one turn mile, pick five wagering, a low 15% takeout, 50 cent minimum wager. And in the opener, you landed on the eight horse. And uh, that is, you've said it all. And uh, you and I agree on this one. Yeah, and, and, and you said it all, so going back to the main track where he's got uh, five wins, or he's got multiple wins on the main track, but really I like to cut back to a one-turn mile, Joe. He, uh, three of, uh, you said it all's wins have come at this one-turn distance. He's also, Matt Shire claimed him uh, two starts back, ran him essentially a little bit over his head last time, dropping him back to the right level, and uh, Matt Shire, five for 15, second off the claim. So, uh, small sample size, but he He's really sharp with this move. No doubt, a 10 strike racing high percentage ownership group. And uh, this horse has won sprinting earlier in the career. If you're wondering about two turns versus one, and the last time this horse wore blinkers back on June the 2nd of 2020, puts the blinkers back on today. James and I on the same page in the opening race. As we move on to race number two, James, some two year old races already uh, this time of year. Five furlongs the distance. The distances will continue to get longer as we move into the summer and eventually into the fall. And uh, this made the special. It holds a purse of 120000 Thank you, Derby City Gaming. Two-year-old Phillies in the spotlight. And you ended on the number four devious dame for Norm Cassie. A Big ticket item by Gervin, 240 grand uh, OBS March. Yeah, one of the top sellers for a Gervin Louisiana Derby winner um, that is a freshman sire, freshman, going to be a freshman sire. But the dam is a half to three stakes winners, like Joe said. I think the Walt works are solid and always encouraging to see Norm Cassie get off the good start winning his first meet here because he can win races in bunches uh, when his stable's rolling. So a really tough race. Lots of options in here. You might want to watch the tote board when this race comes along. But from a multi, I like number four, Devious Dame, but I'm going to be spreading in this from a multi-race perspective. Yeah, not much to go on here. You try to look at uh, pedigrees, maybe which ones are precocious. You look at the connections, you look at the workouts, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the rail's not normally a great place to be for inexperienced young horses, but I did pick one yesterday that made the lead that won. Really good Probably pick. got an extra, you know, Notch or two in the odds because of the rail. People get scared of that when they're wagering. Empire of my own draws the rail here for Steve Asmussen. But this is a half to Cogburn, who was second in the Bachelor as a two-year-old at Oaklawn. Uh, and this horse, or excuse me, second in the Bachelor at Oaklawn just this past week on April the 30th. The dam was 7 for 18 lifetime and Indiana bred with good speed and again a classic empire of Philly that cost 170000 at OBS March. I think the winner will come from either the one or the four. Yeah, third top seller for uh, classic empire at auction that year so uh, definitely one that uh, you know uh, had some, has, has a pedigree play angle and then it appears to be training well for Steve Asmussen as well. 
All right, race number three, sixteen thousand dollar claimer, seven furlongs the distance in this one. And uh, James, we both have the two on top, Abuelo Nuno, and I got a chance to see this horse uh, run several times in New Orleans. Exactly, and that's really what I'm relying upon. I like those efforts. I just think that uh, Abuelo Nuno enters this race in good forms. I really like those efforts at fairgrounds this winter versus uh, claiming foes. Last time he ran an entry-level allowance and ran solidly. But uh, I just think he has good tactical speed. He's going to get a good trip with uh, James Graham, and I'm giving the Abuelo Nuno the edge here, Joe. Yeah, and Tom Amos puts his horses where they belong. Maggie Moss has won a lot of races with Tom over the years. Good form in uh, New Orleans, like we mentioned. Then last out, second best in an A other than an Indiana Grand on the rise. The winner that day, Mr. Kelly, razor sharp, six to five shot. Abuelo Nuno wound up finishing second best. And real quickly here, James, because we got uh, several races to get through. Just want to mention Cove Blue because you and I are both against this one. Six to five in the morning line. When Gates Hawaii are two turns on turf last out, most of the success has been sprinting on the dirt. I just don't trust him. I don't trust him either, and I think he's going to get over bet off of the turf race. All right, let's move on to race number four. Start of a pick five, three pick five opportunities on the 11 race program here today. Six furlongs the distance, $20,000 starter. And uh, in this race, James, the rail horse is yours. Most Mojo. I don't think you're going to get 12 to 1, but you should get a square price, and I think this horse should get the right trip. You know, every horse in this field, except for Moe's Mojo, for the most part, the other seven runners in race four, like to race on the lead or just off it. Moe's Mojo is going to be employing a stalking, you know, push-button tactics in here. I think those last three races were okay at Oakland Park, but I go back to his last start here at Churchill Downs in November. He runs better at Churchill. He won by allowance by four lengths and just crushed them that day, looking good and I just think he's going to get a perfect setup. He is my price play of the day. Uh, obviously got to get past Baby Yoda. Might not but even if he runs second to Baby Yoda I could always play a straight exacta. It was National Star Wars Day yesterday. May the 4th be with you. Baby Yoda scratched. Yeah. Maybe the force won't be with him here on Cinco de Mayo. He can be really inconsistent. Exactly. Yes. He can also win this race by five lengths. Well, obviously. Like yeah, exactly. Wait, Pierce, mean, he was a favorite in a grade one stake or early favorite last fall. So, yeah, running at this uh, starter allowance level for two races in a row, it's a little bit peculiar as well. I could understand the last being a confidence builder, but I thought he'd be going back into, like, allowance or stakes company off of it. That was a public workout. He was never asked in that race, and you know, do you go into the stakes with the bigger purse or do you just try to take the low-hanging fruit while you're still eligible for starters? I, I'd say I'd go for the low-hanging well, when fruit. Well, when Baby Yoda drilled Olympiad last year at Saratoga, they had no plans to run him in anything but stakes going forward, and that just didn't work out, so... I guess that's their that's what they that's where they think he fits best. But it, best, but it's a concern for me because he ran faster last year than he has this year. All right, that'll be a very interesting race. Uh, Baby Yoda expected to be the odds on favorite. James is going to oppose. I am not. Race number five on the turf, brand new turf course here at Churchill Downs. Nine furlongs is the distance. Maiden special weight, purse 120,000. A lot of different ways you can go. And this one, James, that uh, you landed on the two horse. That is James Jones for Chad Brown, a Flavion Pratt, narrow miss on debut at Tampa. Yeah, and I just thought he didn't have the best of trips. He was sort of like caught up a little bit back in uh, uh, the back of the pack early on. Made a nice move on the far turn, came up a little bit short in second. I thought Skylander ran a good race that day. Perfect educational race. Gets uh, Flavion Pratt today, James Jones does. I look forward to improving graduate for Chad Brown. I like the nine enough already, and I like him qu quite a bit. On debut, one turn mile, lost to Charge It, his stable mate, uh, by more than eight lengths. But Charge It is a legitimate chance in the Kentucky Derby. Sloppy racetrack last out of Keeneland, post 12 of 12. Five wide on the first turn, four wide trip, six wide on the second turn, and still sustain the bid to the wire. The dam interject won a mile and five sixteenths turf race at Kentucky Downs during her career. Turf debut for this one, nine furlongs should be right up his alley, should continue to improve for Todd Pletcher. If this horse is four to one, you can get behind me in line. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's the real question, first time turf.
Let's take a look at race number six on the card. In just a moment, we'll send it to Brandon Staubel for the particulars of the Derby City Six, James. But uh, let's you and I handicap it first. Mile and a 16th the distance. A maiden claiming 75000 is the price tag if you would like to write out a check. And uh, you've got a gut feeling on the six horse. Yeah, I mean, I thought that race six was not was a pretty, uh, not the strongest feel, but a very competitive race. And I wound up landing with my gut feeling or on gut feeling uh, number six for Al Saul Jr. And uh, basically, he's run well twice. He's run well, I thought, in both starts. I think that uh, uh, a lot of uh, trainers use these two-turn turf races early in a career for uh, horses. They don't have as many options uh, to run long on dirt. See, plenty of like successful horses make their first or second start on turf, switch to the main track. The, the pedigree on gut feeling looks like main track, you know, perfectly good for that and uh, gets first time gelding and I just thought that those last couple of workouts were really solid at Churchill. John Ortiz, Ray Lou Gutierrez, big day for them yesterday. They won a stake race. Johnny won two. Ray won three races on the Wednesday card. They team up with Defied, 75,000 maiden claimer on the drop here. And James, this horse owes me some money. I've been chasing him for a while. Newly turned gelding, blinkers on, sharp workouts, has run better than it looks on paper. And I just got a feeling maybe today he puts it all together. You know, one thing with him is I just would like to see him be able to stay a little bit closer to the uh, pace. If he drops too maybe far back. Maybe the blinkers back, help. Yeah. I, what's that? I said maybe the addition of blinkers will maybe help the with blinker, that. Yeah, they, they do almost the whole kitchen sink. Blinkers, <laughs> gelding. Uh, yeah, they're trying to, uh, something new with uh, Defy today. All right. Let's send it to Brandon Staubel. Again, the Derby City Six carryover information. Uh, Brandon's got a ticket for you, too. Brandon? Thanks, guys. Uh, Derby City 6, yeah, going to start in race 6 here. Let's look at yesterday's results and uh, see what that paid out yesterday. A little bit of a, a low payoff, but we had a lot of favorites yesterday. Al Kahira to kick things off at 9-5. to five. Fair-haired boy, 5-2. to two. Bag Boss, Gate to Wire, 9-5. to five. thought Top Gunner was a little bit difficult in there, 5-1. to one. Big Invasion, 1-2. to two. And then Byzantine to close things out, 3-1. to one. So pretty chalky sequence there. But um, if you came up with maybe one of those uh, 6 $7 tickets, $328 wouldn't be a bad payoff. Let's take a look at the particulars here. $20,000, six, excuse me, $20,695 carryover. Going to start here and raise six, 20 cent wager, 15% takeout. And don't forget on Derby Day, it's a mandatory payout. It has to go. So hopefully uh, that'll build a little bit. If not, uh, maybe I take it down today with my ticket. I'm going to throw the favorite out in here. You'll see that in my signature plays. Not going to use the number seven dual threat going to go four, five, eight, and then I have a couple of singles. Downtown, downtown Abbey going to be a single anywhere close to that uh, debut race. We'll take this and then a uh, little bit of a price play, I thought, but with some scratches, probably going to go from eight to one to probably three to four to one. I thought Grace uh, Fable was a little clever in the opening verse, uh, possibly a gate to wire thread in there. We'll spread a little bit in the juvenile. I'm going to use five horses in there. And then in the un Unbridled Sydney, we'll go four deep. And then I thought that last uh, race, Maiden Claiming 50, was a little bit tricky. So uh, going to spread a little bit in the last three races. Hopefully my opinion opinions are right in races six, seven, and eight. $48, guys. That's how I see it. All right, thanks. We'll take a look at Scott's ticket later when Scott's on the air for race number six. Scott will have a ticket for you, so don't despair. Carryover pool again is um, over $20,000 for the Derby City Six. Pick five starts in race number seven, James. A tapping on the gas pedal just a bit. We've got three stakes still to cover. A other than six furlongs is the distance here in the seventh event. And uh, you are on the seven horse. Bell Rebel. That is Bell, Bell Rebel. Looks like a two horse race, kind of sort on paper. Probably, yeah. The between her and the four horse uh, downtown Abbey. Bell Rebel de debuted on the Louisiana Derby undercard. I've talked about it a lot. Uh, those stakes, those cards usually have stakes horses running often in maiden races because owners want to run them big days. I thought she was ultra uh, impressive leading wire that wire that day. A three year old filly by Upstart Bell Rebel. 
the third place finisher, Patna, came right back, one easy at into Mischief Philly for Judmon and Brad Cox. The runner up uh, misreads in the second race tomorrow, and I look for her to run really well. And I like Bell Rebel on the front end today. Yeah, didn't run nearly as fast as Downtown Abbey, but galloped out very strongly. Probably has more to give. Downtown Abbey, though, a lot faster on debut. Got a perfect spying trip, rolled by in visually impressive fashion under a very mild hand ride from Deshaun Parker, who is back to ride. Good to see uh, Brett Calhoun, as he often does, showing that loyalty. Good to have Deshaun here at Churchill Downs as we move forward to the eighth race. And uh, we're going to send it back to Brandon here. We've got some stakes fields to take a look at. Keep the mics open here. like to have some conversation uh, between the three of us on these three stakes. But uh, got about five minutes left in the show, guys. So back to Brandon. First of three stakes on the car, Brandon, on the turf. Yeah, guys, we've got a trio of stakes races. Uh, it'll kick things off with the op opening verse on the uh, turf course going a mile in there. Uh, I think the scratches really hurt this field a little bit, but uh, number nine, we'll take a look at the first six in here. Uh, Miss Set Piece, Big Scratch, uh, Morning Line favorite. Mr. Dumas, a horse that I've always liked, has some tactical speed with Ray Gutierrez. Uh, Monarchs Glenn from the rail, going to be saving ground, kind of a deep closer. It'll be in interesting to see um, how this turf course will play today. Favored some speed as we scroll through the horse take a look and uh, my top pick guys number nine grace fable i think has a big pace advantage in here particularly with some scratches spectacular gym possibly maybe to show some speed but kentucky pharaoh coming out i thought uh, definitely changed the complexion of the race yeah, a million percent agree. I've got Grace Fable on top too, Brandon. This horse was a good third in this race last year behind set piece. Uh, turned for home with the lead, uh, but got run down by set piece, who was a legitimate graded stakes type runner. James, who do you like? I like uh, Grace Fable as well. I thought she needed uh, he needed his last at race. Like you said, big race last year on the front end. Hot jockey and Luis Saez. All right, back to Brandon. Brandon, this time of year, two-year-olds who win don't have anywhere really to go except the stakes race. We've got one for him here, the Kentucky Juvenile. Uh, actually, a couple of maidens involved as well. Yeah, a lot of shippers in this race, guys. The uh, Juvenile, $200,000 purse. Uh, Tom's Regret on the inside, a horse I'm kind of interested in, shipping in from California at 9-2. to two. Uh, King Adrock, I know James has some interest in uh, for Louis Mendez. And uh, cool spirit, first time starter, 20 to one. So that's kind of interesting to have a first time starter in a stakes race. Flipping over to the second page in here, Steve Asmussen, always tough in these races. A horse that had a little bit of a slow start in the number eight rivet last time. And uh, Hurricane Debbie on the outside for Wesley Ward always has to be respected in these races. And you're going to the one, uh, Tom's regret, uh, the California Invader who got a big number, right? That's correct. All right, uh, James, I'm on the eight horse here. Uh, Brandon alluded to the slow start on debut. Lost to Mr. Gordy, who I thought was impressive. I think he's got a chance here, too. But Rivet broke slowly, was four wide on the turn, sustained the bid to the wire with a more alert break today. I think this horse can break his maiden in this stake. If Steve didn't think so, he'd be running him against maidens. Yeah, I mean, that slow start really hurt him, uh, I, uh, obviously, uh, you would think, in that race. I did, though, land on King Adrock. I loved his turn of foot in the debut. I think he's going to carry that four and four and uh, I'm going to give him the edge. Two-turn turf race in the first stake, the opening verse, Brandon, but this one, the unbridled Sydney, mad dash for cash on the grass, five and a half furlongs, and some familiar names in here. Yeah, a lot of these Phillies have faced each other. Uh, I'm this is one of my favorite races, uh, particularly during uh, Derby Week. I uh, just think it's a, a really fun uh, race for the Phillies and Mayors. Uh, number two, Brooke Marie is a little bit interesting. I thought, uh, where's the speed going to come from in here, guys? I thought from the inside, especially with Luis Saez up, he's going to get forward position. A little bit dangerous. I ultimately settled on the number five change of control. I really like that turf work here back on April 26th. And I thought last time was just too far back. The pace was pretty hot, but um, she just likes to show up and run uh, good races. I'm just hoping the price won't be too short on change of control. Uh, Toby's heart always threatens to run a good race. And then going good uh, can also throw in a fast race every now and then. Brooke Marie's won four of her last five, and she has an excuse when she ran third behind LZ, who is razor sharp in New Orleans and change of control in the Amy. I'm going to go with the number eight on top here, James. Uh, that is going good. Excuse me. No. The seven on top here. I'm going to go with the seven on top here, going good, who was second behind LZ, third last out behind Campanile, but lost position early and had to close. She likes to be up close, and I think she's going to get a great trip from post seven. Yeah, and Brandon Rep. 
reference that he asked, uh, where's the speed going to come from in this race? I think it's number seven going good. Troubled starts in her two of her last three starts, but you can see these front running efforts when she does break well. She gets out of the gate today. She's going to be the one to catch, turn it for home with Tyler. Brandon will be back in just a few moments with Rafael Bejarano outside the jocks room. Looking forward to that as James and I wrap up on Churchill Downs today with race number 11. Maiden claiming 56 furlongs the distance here. Uh, they are Phillies and Mares, three and older. And uh, James, you're on the nine. You and I both going to the outside here. And I got a feeling we might be dueling early. You're on quick money and I'm on catchless. Yeah, and I'm just throwing a line through that last race at quick money. I, I didn't put too much stock in that. Didn't get out of the gate that day. He's got a break running. He breaks running and runs back to those previous efforts. I think it'll be tough with Ricardo Santana. Tatchless coming in from Gulfstream on debut as a distant 10th. The second try going seven furlongs. Very fast pace. 22 flat, 44 and three. Absolutely cooked in those wild early fractions. This horse against a maiden claiming 50 field. Looks pretty tough to me. Luis Sai, as you talked about him being a good forward rider. Drawn outside of your horse, which I think is an advantage. Yeah, and I got number 10 second. You're right. It's, it's a speed and fade angle last time for the 10, which can be a very powerful handicapping angle for maidens. James continuing to join me here uh, for the starting gate. Scott Shapiro will be joining uh, in just a couple of races from now. Brandon Staubel outside the jocks room with Rafael Bejarano, and we'll give you our signature plays, tell you about some great promotions from Twin Spires, and a whole lot more in just a bit. Steve Butterman, National Anthem, Travis Stone, the voice of Churchill Downs with the changes and the play-by-play. -play. Enjoy Thurby, everybody. We'll be back in just a bit. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Churchill Downs. Please rise for the national anthem and the strapping Steve Buttleman. <laughs> 